Hello and welcome to video 3 for week 3. In this video we're going to define loci. In the first video for this week we defined the notions of a span. In the second video we said that a span was a type of linear subspace or and we could also have the notion of affine subspace. Loci give us another way of accessing the idea of linear and affine subspaces. The concept may be familiar from calculus but I'm going to start with the basic definition and the application in which we use that particular definition for this course as if you haven't seen it before. So a locus is a set of points which satisfy some equation or equations. It could be multiple equations. Some classic examples, the unit circle is the locus of x squared plus y squared equals 1 in the plane. Um, that's just one equation, gives us one shape. We can have multiple equations. So if I have the equation x equals 0, y equals 0, and z equals 0, the origin is the locus of all three of those equations. So I put all of them together. I need this one, I need this one, and I need this one to specify that I only mean the origin as a single point. The origin satisfies this equation, x plus y plus z equals 0, because 0 plus 0 plus 0 is in fact 0. But the origin is not the locus of this equation, since many other vectors satisfy this equation. The vector 1, negative 1, 0 also satisfies this equation. So I need all three equations to specify particularly just the origin. The number of equations affects the nature of what points are actually in the locus. In this course we only want linear equations. We had x squared plus y squared equals 1 previous slide gave us the circle and the circle is not a flat infinitely extended object. In this course we're interested in flat geometry so we're interested in the loci of specifically linear equations. So let me be very clear what I mean by a linear equation. If I have some variables, I think of them as coordinates in Rn. I have some constants um, numbered by the variables and also an additional constant C. Then a linear equation is something I get by doing the things that are linear, multiplying by constants and adding together and making equal to a constant. All linear affine subspaces, so the things we could describe as spans or offset spans, are the loci of linear equations. All of Rn is the locus of 0 or 0 or any other trivial equation. So if you want to describe the entire space, just give an equation where you have 0 times everything on the left and 0 on the right. Whatever vector you consider, everything satisfies 0 plus 0 or any other kind of trivial equation. But let's look at some more focused examples. Uh, in R2, x equals 3 is a vertical line. It's all points, points with x-coordinate 3, so the y-coordinate can be whatever you want. It goes up and down. In R2, y equals 4 is a horizontal line. And these are some of the original examples of lines I used back at the start of the calculus course, for those of you who did that with me. Um, these are pretty familiar things. We're hopefully familiar with equations of lines, but now we're thinking about them as loci of linear equations. These are linear equations. And I can allow to have multiple equations. So if I consider both these equations, x equals 3 and y equals 4, then I want a point that's on this vertical line and a point that's on this horizontal line. Horizontal, horizontal line. Uh, I get the point 3, 4. So the locus of the two equations is now the unique point. And this is the intersection of the two lines. Some loci are pretty familiar to us. So some, new th some familiar things are happening as well as some new things. Uh, the locus of one linear equation in R2 is going to give us a line. We could write it in slope-intercept form, but this is also a familiar form for writing equations of lines. If I do one equation in R3, I get a plane, which may also be familiar to people, may not. We're going to spend some more time on planes, making sure that they become familiar. Um, this idea of having one linear equation, we generalize that by saying that a hyperplane in Rn is the locus of one linear equation. So the important thing about a plane in R3 is not necessarily that it has dimension 2, but more that it has dimension 1 less than the ambient space. So the, the plane generalizes to the notion of hyperplane as one linear equation. And this brings up an important idea about loci compared to spans. Spans, we sort of think about building them from the ground up. We're taking linear combinations of vectors. Each vector points in a unique direction. So if we add more vectors, we add more possible directions, we get a larger span. So the span is sort of starting with nothing and adding vectors and adding linear combinations and building it up. A locus works the other way around. We start with the entire space and we add restrictions. The equations are restrictions, since instead of the entire place, I only want 
the vectors which satisfy this equation. So the first thing we can do is one restriction. So sort of the most obvious locus is the locus of one equation, which is why that's given a particular name. That name is hyperplane. And it mirrors the plane in R3 because the plane is one dimension less than the ambient space. We've put one restriction on. The locus goes from three dimensions of the entire space down to two dimensions of the plane specified by one restriction. And you should really think of loci as imposing restrictions on the entire space and spans is building up the space by adding new directions. I already mentioned intersection. The, the connection between loci and intersection is really important, so I want to point out that concept here before I finish this video. Um, so I can think of a locus of multiple equations as the intersection of the, each of the individual loci. So say I have three loci, L1, L2, L3, that come from three equations. So each of them are hyperplanes, essentially. Each of them is one restriction. So if I look at all three equations at once, I can think of the locus of all three equations. So I can pose all three restrictions at once. And what I'm going to get then is I'm going to get the intersection of all three of these loci. So you can think of the locus of multiple equations as the intersections of the locus of the individual pieces. If you have two equations in R3, each one's going to be a plane. The locus of both equations, you can look at the intersection of that plane, which in most cases will be a line, so forth and so on, in this pattern. So it's, it's a really nice conceptual thing to think about loci of multiple equations as the intersection of the individual loci coming from each equation.